Hello and welcome to Cambridge for Kids History Podcasts with me, Matthew Brooks. I'm an archaeologist and I love history. And in these podcasts, I would like to share my knowledge and discoveries with you. This is episode four of the Seven Wonders of the Ancient World series. In this episode, we are boating to the small island of Pharos, just off the coast of Alexandria, one of ancient Egypt's most important coastal cities. There, an enormous lighthouse loomed, devoted to Zeus and Proteus, the Greek god of the sea. Archaeologists have recently discovered at least 40 wrecked boats off Alexandria's coast. So maybe not the best lighthouse, but it sure did look magnificent. Beware of the rocks. The lighthouse of Alexandria was constructed on the small island of Pharos, close to the harbour of the coastline city of Alexandria in Egypt. It was built around 300 to 280 BC, during the reigns of the pharaohs, Ptolemy I and II. It stood at a height of over 100 metres, and was so impressive that it was swiftly recognised as one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Unfortunately lost over time, the structure would leave behind a lasting story. After standing for over 1,600 years, it gave its Greek name, Pharos, to the style of architecture and why it was designed in the first place, which was to guide boats safely to the harbour, using its bright lights from its highest point. It would later influence the Arab kingdoms to the east, and many cities with harbours around the Mediterranean Sea copying its style. The lighthouse was considered the second tallest structure in the ancient world to be built by human hands, after the pyramids of Giza. Alexandria in ancient Egypt was established by Alexander the Great in 331 BC and thrived as a trading port under the rule of the Ptolemy dynasty, which lasted from 305 to 30 BC. Thanks to the harbour being naturally shaped by the Nile Delta, it was the perfect place to build a huge, busy port. Alexandria was a multicultural city with citizens living there from all over the Greek realm. This famous city even had its own council and congress, produced its own coins, and became the most celebrated city for education, knowledge and wisdom. The lighthouse had one main job, which was to direct and protect sailors coming to Alexandria from the punishing storms that tormented the Mediterranean Sea. To that end, it was dedicated to possibly two gods. Firstly, Zeus Sota, which was part of the spirit of Zeus that oversaw safety, protection and deliverance from harm. In memory of him, the inscription on the lighthouse was made with half-metre-high letters. It was also devoted to Protus, the Greek sea god, who was called the Old Man of the Sea. Around 300 BC, Ptolemy I ordered the construction of the gigantic lighthouse to guide ships and to prove his authority and importance to the people of the ancient world. The project was completed some 20 years later, but he would die halfway through its creation, and it was finished by his son and heir, Ptolemy II. The lighthouse was not the only impressive structure to see at Alexandria. Other buildings included the tomb of Alexander the Great, the Society for Sages and Scholars, called the Museum, the Serapian Temple, dedicated to the official god of Egypt at the time, Serapis, and the superb library. The lighthouse Alexandria was certainly not the first lighthouse in the ancient world, but it was most definitely the most enormous and famous one Ancient lighthouses were constructed above all to assist with plotting courses for sea captains, informing them of where a harbour was located. They were not built to warn of perilous conditions or treacherous rocks, but because the waters near Alexandria were so unsafe, 
the Pharos Lighthouse made sure it performed both tasks. The precise design of the lighthouse unfortunately is not given to us by ancient scholars, with accounts often being unclear and puzzling. Most writers do agree that the lighthouse was painted white, to make it more visible in bad conditions. It had three levels, the lowest being rectangular, the middle octagonal, and the top one round. What was unmistakable was the existence of the great statue of Zeus Sota, at the very top of the lighthouse, overlooking the seas. Modern researchers have questioned the height of the lighthouse, and estimated that it ranged from 100 to 140 metres, quite a bit higher than Thirst Fort. At the time, wood was a limited resource. A fire made from the burning of oil was to be found at the top of the lighthouse, to make it noticeable at night. Although this is also questioned by researchers, as the writings from many of the ancient scholars made no comment that the light was present. Later scholars such as Pliny, who we mentioned before, who travelled from wonder to wonder describing their features, did mention a light as follows. The object of it is by light of its fires at night, to give warning to ships of the neighbouring shoals, and to point out to them the entrance of the harbour. According to Arab scholars, there was even a mirror made of polished bronze, used to reflect the glare out to sea, which reached great distances. The mirror during the day was used to reflect the sun's rays to the same effect. The lighthouse of Alexandria may have been considered an ancient wonder, but it was not actually a very good lighthouse in reality. Underwater archaeologists have exposed over 40 wrecked boats in this part of the ancient harbour of Alexandria. Maybe it was better suited as a symbol of power in ancient Egypt, rather than a useful lighthouse. Hopefully today you have enjoyed this episode and learnt something new. If you like this podcast, be sure to subscribe so you never miss another episode. Tune in next time with your host, me, Matthew Brooks, for more time travelling. Thanks a lot for listening and have a great day. My name is Rob and I'm host and guide to Songbirding, a new relaxed pace birding by ear podcast that takes you into the breeding territories of a number of bird species in midwestern Ontario. You can find songbirding wherever you get your podcasts or visit songbirding.com.